people knew that they were here. They were washed up on the beach, but nobody really knew much else about them. I came to Bremen because I, I knew they were here. So this was paradise for me. It is such an iconic species for Australia. It's something that is totally and absolutely unique. Even with a lot of photographers, I point it out to them and they're going, I can't see it. And you point it out to it and go like this and they can't see it. And then you go like this. <laughs> and suddenly their eyes get as big as dinner plates. <laughs> the, the dawning of realization that there it is. People in the Eastern States, they say that they see the same dragons year in, year out at the same place. I don't have that. I rarely see the same dragon twice. At the most, I might see it for the beginning of the following pregnant season. After that, it disappears. The temperate waters of the southern part of Australia are unique in the world. We have an enormous diversity of life here that we're really only beginning to understand. Basket stars, we get those in, in shallow water and deep water. They're basically during the daytime, they're closed up and at nighttime, well, they'll crawl up, they'll spread out, they look like a brain, big brain, and they'll crawl to the top of the, the reef and they open up so that they can filter feed. And you'll go from something that's about a fist size to something about that size. Needless to say, it's, it says that there's all kinds of species out there that we don't know about. We spend enormous amounts of money looking at the other side of the, the moon and the planets and everywhere else, but we spend very little on the ocean, and yet the ocean is two-thirds of the planet. It's an age-old saying that we know more about what's on the moon or the other side of the moon than 10 meters of water. They still find new species in 10 meters of water here. Using sponge, for example, I think there's something like 3,000 varieties that have been identified in Australia, but we only know something about a, a thousand of them. I mean, we've got God knows how many species of sponge here that most people have no idea of. Most of them don't even have a name. The groper here will look after the reef. Basically, the groper are the king of the castle. The basic role of the blue groper in particular is looking after the whole reef structure. They're the, they're the top of the food chain. And as long as you have groper on a reef, you know you have healthy reef. You remove the groper from the reef and effectively the, the reef will start to deteriorate. People don't understand. When they, when they talk of reef, their automatic thought goes to the tropics. That's the only place where there's reef. And, and they don't realize that reef doesn't have to look like they have in the tropics. It can look differently. The Great Southern Reef, you can see some absolutely amazing things. The variety and diversity that we have here is unparalleled. And unfortunately, not enough people know about it. The important thing is that we have protection of this area because it's totally and absolutely unique. The Great Southern Reef is absolutely important as far as I'm concerned needs more knowledge about it.